Hello beautiful people of the world and welcome to a new PD tutorial. In this video we're going to learn how to use a MIDI keyboard with our patches. First of all, hook up your MIDI keyboard into your computer by a USB or a MIDI interface. Then open PD. And the first thing that you want to do is to go to the media menu and then MIDI settings. And you want to search for your device. In my case, it's the Nano Key 2 by Korg. So you want to select it as an input device, save all settings so that PD remembers the settings, click OK, and then we're ready to use it. So to receive MIDI notes into our patches, we have a specific object called Note In. As always, if we right click on an object, we can have access to the help file. And in this case, we have a median object hooked up with several number atoms. So we can copy them and we can paste them into our patch. And we can get rid of the previously created object. And as you can see, we can receive via this object the node number, velocity value, and the MIDI channel we are receiving our MIDI data from our keyboard with. So as I press the keyboard, as you can see, we receive the MIDI node numbers and the velocity values. As with any other object in PD, we can use creation arguments, and in this case, we can use one creation argument to specify the MIDI channel we are receiving the notes from our keyboard. So if we open the help file again, we can see that we have an example and as you can see, the creation argument is for channel number and port number. And of course, when we use the creation argument, one of the outputs disappears because we don't need it anymore. So in my case, the MIDI channel is number 33, so I can create an object with 33 as creation argument. You can copy and paste the first two number atoms with the comments, and we can hook them up to the new created object. And again, as I press the notes on the keyboard, you see the MIDI node number and the velocity values received from the object. Now we can be sure that we are receiving the MIDI notes values specifically from that keyboard. So if you have multiple keyboards connected on your patch or multiple controllers sending MIDI node numbers, you can use several of them and you can be sure that for each node in object, you can specify a different creation argument for the channel. So you're going to receive from that specific object the notes coming from a specific controller or keyboard. So let's make a practical sample, very simple, with an oscillator. Let's say that we want to control the frequency of the oscillator and the amplitude so we can create our very useful and extremely interesting sine wave oscillator, a multiplier object to control the amplitude, a DAC object, of course, to listen to our uh, sound. Now, we have to scale down the MIDI values into different ranges. So let's start with the velocity. So velocity values go from zero to 127 as for any MIDI parameter and we have to scale it down in a range between 0 and 1. So we saw how to do it in the last tutorial, and it's very easy. We just have to divide those numbers by 127. So as I played on the keyboard again, we are receiving the velocity values, and we have scaled them down into the 0 to 1 range. So let's use our usual combination of pack and line objects to smooth out the clicks. And now we have to do the same thing for the frequency. So we have to scale, so we have to basically convert the MIDI node numbers into frequency values. So we have to convert the 0, 127 range numbers into Hertz values. Now, luckily for us, there is a specific object in PD to do this, so we don't have to manually do the calculation. And the object is called MTOF, which stands for MIDI to Frequency. So we create a new MTOF or MIDI to Frequency object, and we can create a number box just to see what's going on here. And as we play on the keyboard, you should actually see numbers coming in. So if I play the notes, you see the values in Earth converted by the object. 
Okay, let's listen how it sounds very briefly uh, because it's not so much interesting because it's just a sine wave, but nonetheless, let's see how it sounds. So as you can hear, now we have different frequencies for the different notes and of course we have different amplitude values uh, converted from the velocity values received by our keyboard. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. In the next one we're going to see how to make these things uh, much more interesting. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content, uh, like the video, comment if you have questions, you can write them down into the comment section and share, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.